Hi, and welcome back to another Daily Dose of Anime Recaps. With the remarkable strides in science and technology, humanity finds itself standing at the threshold of a world where artificial intelligence permeates every facet of human existence. In the midst of this vast landscape, a group of spirited middle school boys embark on an extraordinary journey into the captivating realm of AI gaming. Amidst their ranks, a seemingly unassuming boy, orphaned and unremarkable, yearns to forge his own destiny and catalyze a transformative shift in his life through the immersive realm of AI gaming. The story commences with a climactic duel between two formidable adversaries. The first combatant is Black Skull, an immensely skilled and renowned pro gamer known for his unrivaled abilities. His opponent is a determined swordsman driven by the desire to become the greatest and seek out powerful adversaries. However, Black Skull effortlessly overpowers the swordsman with a single strike, maintaining his flawless no-hit record, a testament to his dominance. In the year 20XX, a revolutionary virtual reality system named Interverse emerges, transforming the world in profound ways. Interverse offers a multitude of immersive worlds, each brimming with unique experiences and adventures. One such world is the immensely popular MMORPG game called HOT. Within this virtual realm, players can delve into a vast and enchanting fantasy world engaging in epic boss raids and a myriad of thrilling quests. The ever-strong Li Haiyong Zhang is known to many as the enigmatic and formidable Black Skull within the gaming community. Li possesses an exceptional combination of athletic prowess, striking handsomeness, and substantial wealth. However, his success in the virtual world doesn't necessarily translate to kindness and empathy in the real world. He engages in callous behavior, bullying a weaker individual while his friend sadistically adds insult to injury. The anguish etched on the boy's face reveals the depths of his despair, a result of relentless abuse at the hands of Lee and his companion. Within the revolutionary game, HOT introduces a groundbreaking synchro rate system, which measures the degree of synchronization between players and their avatars. The higher the synchro rate, the more vivid and immersive the virtual reality experience becomes. Remarkably, Black Skull possesses an extraordinary ability to achieve a synchro rate of up to 200%, making him an invincible force within the game. This unprecedented level of synchronization allows him to fully immerse himself in the virtual world, perceiving every sensation and detail with unparalleled realism. As the story unfolds, the contrast between Li Hyun Jung's prowess in the virtual realm and his behavior in the real world becomes increasingly apparent. With a mischievous grin adorning his face, Li Hyun Jung, known as Black Skull, eagerly immerses himself in the virtual world as the final match of the tournament begins. The stage is set for an exhilarating showdown between Black Skull and his formidable opponent, Ark. Known for his versatility, has a reputation for adapting his play style and selecting the most advantageous class to counter his adversaries. Surprisingly, he opts for a magician class, which is traditionally considered a disadvantageous matchup against an assassin like Black Skull. Black Skull's expression reveals his disdain for players who fail to commit to a single class and master it. Fueled by this annoyance, the combatants engage in a fierce battle. As anticipated by the tournament viewers, Ark initially struggles against the swift agility of the Assassin class. However, Ark skillfully lures Black Skull into close range and strategically employs magic traps, catching Black Skull off guard and shattering his one-hit record. Black Skull's anger intensifies, and he unleashes his signature Assassin skill, Dark Strike. Yet, Ark counters with his own trump card, the powerful Energy Blast. In doing so, Ark not only demonstrates his combat prowess, but also mocks Black Skull for underestimating those perceived as weak. He playfully taunts Black Skull, 
exposing the arrogance that has marked his gameplay. Enraged and driven by the desire to reclaim his dominance, Black Skull taps into his remarkable synchro rate of 200% to manipulate time, hoping to gain an advantage. However, to his surprise, Ark boasts an even higher synchro rate, countering Black Skull's attempt to gain the upper hand. With unwavering determination, Ark delivers the final decisive blow, emerging victorious. Black Skull thought he could bend time, but Ark showed him that time is no match for a hero armed with a well-synced alarm clock. The battle culminates in an unexpected outcome, a seemingly feeble mage class triumphing over the mighty assassin class. Park Noah, a young boy behind the Ark, leaves the VR station with a radiant smile on his face. A professor at a school is searching for talented students to suggest to a prestigious academy. He discusses this with his assistant, Kim, who expresses interest in recommending a student for the academy. Kim informs the professor that they have come across a middle school student with an extraordinary synchro rate. The professor is astonished to hear of a synchro rate exceeding 300% and becomes eager to verify its authenticity in the interverse. Meanwhile, a fateful encounter takes place between Lee Hyunjong and Park Noah, the very student who has endured Lee's bullying alongside his friends. In a twist of fate, Park Noah not only shattered Lee's renowned no-hit record, but also broke his previously undefeated streak. Lee. Having harbored aspirations of entering the prestigious academy armed with his impressive accolades, finds himself stripped of his achievements and titles in a single defeat. Consumed by a sense of disbelief and resentment, Lee confronts Park Noah, accusing him of orchestrating his downfall. However, to Lee's astonishment, Park Noah appears genuinely unaware of the accusations, claiming that he knows no such thing. Confused and unable to comprehend this unexpected turn of events, Lee and his friend leave, their pride wounded. Despite the advancements and opportunities provided by VR technology, the existence of bullies persists, a harsh reminder of the flaws ingrained in human nature. As the class continues, the teacher's indifference towards Park Noah's evident pain becomes increasingly apparent. Despite witnessing the cruelty inflicted upon him, the teacher carries on with the lesson, turning a blind eye to the distressing situation. The teacher's disregard for the suffering before them leaves Park, Noah feeling disgusted, a stark reminder of the apathy and lack of empathy displayed by those in positions of authority. Within the immersive world of H.O.T. Park, Noah embraces his chosen class, the dealer. In this complex virtual realm, the significance of the interverse becomes apparent as the in-game currency, gold, holds the power to be converted into real-world money. However, this financial potential is limited to adult players who are eligible to engage in monetary transactions. In the midst of his gaming journey, Ark finds himself unexpectedly ambushed by a party of players disguised as zombies. These players, known as zombies, represent the impoverished individuals in the real world who work for minimal wages. Desperate for financial relief, they resort to looting other players to survive. Among them is a particularly notorious individual, a red-eyed zombie known for their murderous tendencies, taking lives to steal their hard-earned money. Confronted with the party's relentless attack, Ark initially attempts to avoid direct conflict, choosing to evade rather than engage. However, the party surrounds him, leaving him with no option but to defend himself. In a pivotal moment, a zombie strikes him, the pain resonating through his shoulder. The physical blow triggers memories of Ark's past, reminding him of his own experiences of suffering and victimization during his school life. This memory serves as a catalyst, fueling his determination to break free from the shackles of oppression and not succumb to similar circumstances within the AI world. At that moment, Ark realized that the only thing scarier than a zombie bite was reliving his high school years. With newfound resolve, Ark decides to unleash his full power, 
vowing not to hold back regardless of the cost. In a display of fierce determination, he proceeds to eliminate the zombies one by one with calculated precision. Overcoming the obstacles and hardships that lay before him, Ark emerges triumphant, eliminating all the zombies save for their leader, whose fate remains undecided. In the midst of the intense battle between Ark and the task leader, the outcome seems bleak for Ark as he faces a formidable opponent skilled in player killing techniques. Just as the task leader is prepared to deliver the final blow, a mysterious figure suddenly appears, interposing himself between the combatants and blocking the impending attack. The enigmatic stranger expresses a desire to speak with Ark about his unprecedented synchro rate, which has soared to an unbelievable 400%. Ark is taken aback by this revelation, completely unaware of the extent of his synchro rate due to his lack of financial means to measure it. In this pivotal moment, the NPC moderator of the HOT world, known as Mimimic, materializes to assess Ark's situation and determine if he has resorted to any unauthorized programs or exploits. Determined to clear his name and establish his innocence, Ark willingly engages in another fierce duel with the task leader. Armed with his heightened synchro rate, Ark demonstrates remarkable anticipation and precision, skillfully predicting his opponent's every move and delivering a devastating blow. As the clash reaches its climax, the moderator NPC intervenes once again, affirming Ark's integrity by confirming his lack of involvement in any illicit activities. Moreover, the moderator discloses the astonishing revelation that Ark's synchro rate has reached an unprecedented 527%. Emerged victorious from the battle, Ark revels in the affirmation of his innocence and the realization that he possesses a unique existence within the expansive interverse. However, the elation is short-lived as the unknown player, seizing the opportunity, delivers a fatal blow, effectively ending his current journey. In a cryptic message, the assailant instructs Ark to search for the ID hide on Bush if he wishes to retrieve the lost item that was forfeited due to the penalty incurred. In a world marked by rapid scientific progress, the field of robotic engineering undergoes significant advancements. Among these robots is T1, who has faithfully served the Park Noah family for a decade, diligently fulfilling their needs and observing the young Park Noah's journey. When Park Noah confesses to T1 about his untimely demise in the game and the loss of his valuable possessions, a heated argument ensues between the two. Driven by a determination to find a solution, Park Noah resolves to re-enter the game world, seeking out the mysterious player known as Hide on Bush, who had offered assistance in an unconventional manner to recover his lost gold and items. Unbeknownst to Park Noah, HOB is none other than the professor who had been discussing his synchro rate as HOB reveals this revelation to Ark, the young player is struck with astonishment. Fully aware that gaining entry into the prestigious academy is a coveted dream for any aspiring player, HOB presents Ark with a proposition, requesting his consent to undergo rigorous training personally supervised by the professor himself. As the conversation deepens, HOB proposes that Ark who is, in reality, Park Noah, joins his team to embark on the journey towards the esteemed Fantasy Academy. He poses a thought-provoking question to Ark, asking if he would still be willing to fight. This question strikes a chord within Ark, evoking memories of his past as a vulnerable individual in the real world. Despite the emotional turmoil, Ark provides a somewhat ambiguous response but his unwavering determination to grow and evolve shines through. In a heartfelt moment, the professor expresses his willingness to recommend Ark for the entrance exam of the Fantasy Academy. However, he places a condition upon this recommendation, stipulating that Ark must prove his worthiness by passing an entry test. The following day, Ark arrives at the specified location in the game and is surprised to encounter another player already there. 
a girl named Carrie, who is also recommended by the professor. Intrigued by Ark's incredible synchro rate, the girl expresses her interest and initiates a battle, eager to test her skills against our hero. Thus, a new chapter unfolds in Ark's life as he prepares to face the challenges that lie ahead. The professor and his assistant, Kim, engage in a discussion about their plans involving Park Noah and the inclusion of Carrie in the game to battle against Ark. They share a lighthearted moment, playfully questioning whether Ark will be traumatized by facing off against Carrie. With their expectations set, the professor enters the virtual realm of Interverse to intervene in the impending battle. He introduces Ark and Carrie to each other, explaining that they will be training together as recommended students. Curious about their thoughts on the battle, the professor prompts Ark and Carrie to share their perspectives. Carrie admits that the experience didn't feel pleasant, while Ark emphasizes that being a professional player requires more than just a high synchro rate. Ark further reveals that he felt drained after utilizing his synchro rate to its maximum potential. In response, the professor explains that Ark had pushed himself to the point of burnout by pushing his synchro rate to its limits. Understanding the disparity in abilities between Ark and Carrie, the professor reassures Ark that he will create an environment where he can solely focus on training. The following day, Park Noah is absent from school, causing Lee Hyun Jong to speculate on the possibility of bullying and wonder if Park Noah has finally disappeared. Lost in his thoughts, Lee Hyun Jong unexpectedly comes face to face with Park Noah, who is waiting for him, leading to an encounter that may hold significant implications for both their lives. Park Noah reveals to Lee Hyun that he is actually Ark, the same person who had defeated him in the game world. He challenges Lee Hyun Jong to a real life battle, taunting him about his lack of skill in games which triggers a surge of anger within Lee Hyun Jong. Noah is just so cruel to mock a guy for sucking so much in games. In a fit of rage, Lee Hyun Jong launches a relentless attack on Park Noah, who attempts to defend himself but struggles to block Lee Hyun Jong's furious strikes. Amidst the intense exchange, Lee Hyun Jong questions Park Noah's confidence in winning the fight as he stands alone. In response, Park Noah confidently asserts that facing someone like Lee Hyun Jong, who is alone and unskilled, holds no intimidation for him. However, despite Park Noah's bravado, he finds himself unable to land a single hit on his opponent and is beaten up badly. As Lee Hyun Jong starts to walk away, warning Park Noah never to show his face again, Park Noah musters all his remaining strength and unexpectedly lands a powerful punch on Lee Hai Yun Jong's face, causing him to collapse unconscious onto the ground. It is in this moment of triumph that Park Noah realizes his own weakness in the real world. With a surge of power and a sense of liberation, Park Noah unleashes a primal roar, feeling the exhilaration of fighting back and landing a decisive blow for the first time in his life. This transformative experience awakens a new determination within him, as he recognizes the need to bridge the gap between his virtual achievements and his personal growth in the real world. Noah arrives home and finds T1 engrossed in watching TV. Curious, T1 inquires if Noah had a good time with his friend, Noah responds, mentioning that school was closed, and he ended up tumbling down the stairs. In the virtual game world, Ark and his companions gather inside a cozy house nestled in the village. Their conversation revolves around the upcoming exams, which are designed to assess the students' abilities and prevent any form of cheating. Failure in these exams would render all their arduous efforts futile. Recognizing the need for rigorous training, the professor devises a demanding regimen for Noah. This comprehensive plan includes attending classes, real-world training, honing skills within the game, and engaging in a grueling two-hour arena battle with Carrie. Ark finds himself struggling against Carrie and realizes that he requires more than just a high synchro rate. He needs additional skills and strategic plans. 
As three months pass by, Park Noah diligently prepares for the impending exams. Packing his belongings, he reflects on the journey of the past five years. Despite the absence of his parents, Park Noah remains resolute in pursuing his dream of becoming a professional gamer. With unwavering determination, he boards the train that will transport him to the academy, where he will face the ultimate challenge, the exams that will shape his destiny. Noah arrives at the prestigious academy, where assistant Kim warmly welcomes him. To Noah's surprise, Kim reveals that he was the one who recommended him, unveiling his true identity as the renowned streamer, Planet Man, expressing his eagerness to dive into the immersive world of virtual reality. VR Noah's excitement is dampened when Kim informs him that the professor has instructed all students to rest for the day. However, Kim proposes a mutually beneficial arrangement, suggesting that if Noah acknowledges his attentive care, they can both overlook each other's secrets. Curiosity guiding him, Noah delves into the captivating realm known as the Interverse, a landscape that surpasses his wildest expectations in terms of realism, as always. Within this vast digital domain, he stumbles upon a special status known as the Faker status, paying homage to the legendary gamer, Faker, who accomplished remarkable feats in his prime. Encountering a mysterious statue, triggering a recollection of reading somewhere on Wiki that offering a prayer to it brings good fortune. To his surprise, he notices Carrie, his rival, also engaging in the same ritual. A heated conversation ensues as Noah perceives Carrie as his formidable adversary. Despite enduring grueling training sessions side by side for the past three months, Noah has never managed to defeat Carrie even once. Driven by frustration, he engages her in another intense battle, summoning his determination as he throws a punch, demanding not to look down on him. However, Carrie swiftly retaliates, swiftly knocking Noah to the ground and sternly reminding him of the immense challenges involved in gaining admission to the academy. Urging him not to falter in the upcoming exams, she cautions him about the high stakes. Overwhelmed by a surge of emotions, Noah finds himself bursting into tears, only to receive a harsh punch to the face from Carrie. At that moment, Park Noah's hopeful anticipation of meeting Carrie in the real world, perhaps for a meal together, sets on. Noah has always been captivated by the enigma surrounding Carrie's true appearance and character, with only fragmentary information about her talent, age, and reputation for violence. Noah's curiosity reaches its peak. To his astonishment, Carrie approaches him, causing him to mistake her for an idol. Engaging in a friendly introduction, they exchange their names, and Carrie unveils her true identity as Lee Sia. Seizing the opportunity, they decide to share a meal together, granting Noah the chance to satiate his long-standing curiosity. Our hero has finally got to her good side. Noah musters the courage to inquire about Carrie's path to being recommended for admission to the Academy. She reveals that she was scouted while engaged in a fierce battle contest with the Professor, an intriguing revelation that sparks further discussion. They delve into their thoughts, experiences, and opinions regarding the Professor, forging a connection through their shared passion. Later that night, the directors of the Academy convene for a crucial meeting to deliberate upon the upcoming exams. Tensions rise as Professors Vissen and Lee, Noah's own mentor, engage in a heated argument, demonstrating their differing perspectives. With anticipation building, the director enters the meeting room, capturing both of their attention as he reveals the intricate details of the exams. The challenge takes the form of a thrilling battle royale, where students commence with basic equipment and must scavenge for valuable items and skills. The ultimate objective is survival, as the last student standing claims victory. The student's performance is evaluated based on their KDA kills, deaths, assists, survival rank, and overall performance with an exceptional student selected as the prestigious S rank, entitling them to a special bonus. 
After enjoying a pleasant time with Lee Sia, Noah returns home. Contemplating the realization that she is so warm and friendly that she remains unaware of his lack of experience playing with friends in the real world. The encounter serves as a reminder of the stark contrast between his virtual gaming prowess and his social interactions outside of the game. Driven by a resolute determination to surpass Carrie in the upcoming exams, Noah channels his focus toward achieving exemplary results. As the announcement instructs everyone to enter the Interverse for the exam, Noah finds himself transported to a magnificent palace, teeming with fellow candidates for the Academy entrance exam. Amidst the bustling atmosphere, Carrie approaches him, seeking his attention. However, consumed by his singular goal, Noah ignores her, inadvertently provoking her ire, leading to a confrontation where she beats him for disregarding her. Taking center stage, the Academy's director, Jimmy Fullhouse, introduces himself and proceeds to elucidate the rules of the Battle Royal exam. Intrigued, a student raises a query regarding the concept of ranks. In response, the director explains that ranks play a crucial role, with students initially placed between ranks A and D. However, the allure of higher ranks beckons as they can be acquired by eliminating other players. To add an additional layer of significance, one student will emerge as the esteemed S rank, impacting their treatment and status within the academy. While some students express dissent towards the ranking system, the director delivers an impassioned speech, emphasizing the accountability professional gamers hold towards the public through their gameplay. He underscores the importance of demonstrating skill, integrity, and responsibility as they represent the gaming community at large. With the commencement of the exam, students embark on their journey by strategically selecting their landing spots. Noah carefully chooses his destination, brimming with anticipation for the trials that lie ahead. As the countdown begins, he immerses himself in the hunt for essential items, realizing that every chest could hold a vital advantage. The exam encompasses 10 distinct areas. Lost in his thoughts, Noah's concentration is abruptly shattered when he spots another player avidly collecting chests in close proximity. The world surely is small for our hero. Aware of the exam's stringent grading system, they feign ignorance, intentionally avoiding eye contact and hastily diverting their paths. Meanwhile, the professors share a hearty chuckle, thoroughly amused by the students' playful antics. With their exam scores hanging in the balance, caution guides every move they make. Meanwhile, Carrie diligently scours the labyrinth, her eyes keenly searching for potential targets. The absence of any recorded kills heightens her anticipation. Amidst the winding paths, the player Lucky Puncher stumbles upon a rare and potent item adorned with the highest rank. Filled with confidence and emboldened by his newfound power, he boastfully proclaims his unmatched prowess. However, his triumphant moment is short-lived, for Carrie swiftly tracks him down, setting the stage for a fierce and relentless clash. Despite Lucky Puncher successfully utilizing his rare item's special effect to shatter Carrie's sword, she masterfully evades his onslaught, gracefully maneuvering through his attacks even without a weapon in hand. Just as Carrie stands on the precipice of delivering the finishing blow, the game's kill log abruptly materializes, displaying the ranks of all the examinees. To their surprise, it is revealed that Ark, one of their peers, had killed an elf avatar in the blazing depths of the mountain, becoming the first bloodshed in the exam, a revelation that carries significant weight within the context of the game. Ah, our hero has finally shown his true colors. And by colors, I mean shades of blood, chaos, and a hint of sprinkled mayhem. As the test progresses and 10 minutes elapse since its commencement, Ark, swiftly traversing through the challenging landscape, reaches the fiery confines of the mountain within a mere five minutes. A glimmer of hope emerges as he discovers a chest, 
concealing a sword and shield boasting a remarkable special effect of stunning the enemies upon a successful counterattack. However, his attention is drawn to another student, seemingly asleep with his head buried in the chest. Curiosity gets the better of Ark, prompting him to engage the drowsy student in conversation. Ark's speedy progress makes it clear that he could outrun a sloth on roller skates, but stumbling upon a sleepy head buried in a treasure chest raises the question, is this guy collecting Zs or loot? Briefly awakening, the student responds before promptly slipping back into a deep slumber. Suddenly, an unexpected clash ensues, compelling Ark to tap into the extensive training he has diligently undergone over the past three months. Students under the guidance of Professors Lee and Wiesen find themselves crossing paths. Professor Wiesen expresses a sense of misfortune that Professor Lee's student has encountered Han, a formidable opponent. With a display of formidable power, Han launches a potent attack, placing Ark in a disadvantaged position. As the battle unfolds, Professor Wiesen proudly extols Han's extraordinary abilities emphasizing his unparalleled capacity to discern opponents' intentions by closely observing their heartbeats and subtle facial movements. With unwavering confidence, Wiesen asserts his dominance in the realm of mental warfare, suggesting that Professor Lee's student may simply be plagued by unfortunate luck. However, Professor Lee swiftly retorts, subtly hinting at his own concealed depths and insinuating that Wiesen's secrets are not the only ones at play. Determined to protect himself, Ark resolutely defends against Han's relentless assaults, successfully withstanding the onslaught despite the fervent attempts to find a vulnerability in his defense. In an attempt to break the tension, Han introduces himself to Ark, extending a hand, inquiring about his name. Confident in his strength and harboring a vehement distaste for losing, Han makes it clear that he intends to employ his full power against Ark, demonstrating his exceptional abilities. Han manipulates his surroundings, conjuring a dense fog that envelops Ark while relying on his heightened senses fueled by his remarkable synchro rate. Ark swiftly realizes that attempting to navigate through the fog would prove perilous, as he discovers that it is, in fact, composed of dangerous magma, a formidable obstacle that threatens his survival. Drawing upon his training under the professor's guidance, Ark exercises caution, refraining from pushing his synchro rate to its limits. Meanwhile, the astute director of the exam begins to suspect that the professors harbor undisclosed secrets. Intrigued by the remarkable skill exhibited by both Ark and Han, who seemingly possess a rank capabilities. As the climactic moment approaches, Han, convinced of his imminent victory, readies himself to deliver the final blow. However, to his astonishment, Ark skillfully blocks the attack with his shield skillfully activating its special effect, an invulnerable shield. Seizing the opportunity, Ark swiftly drops the shield and lands a decisive blow, triumphing over Han. Despite his defeat, Han expresses a desire to meet Ark once more before bidding him farewell, mentioning his intent to take a nap. While Ark emerges as the victor, this triumph holds a distinct significance. Unlike his previous encounters with the Synchro Rate, it marks his first kill, clearly recorded in the kill log. Surprisingly, it is revealed that both Ark and Han were initially ranked as D, highlighting the growth they have achieved in the game thus far. Upon the revelation of the rankings, diverse reactions ripple through the participants. Carrie, seething with anger over not attaining the coveted S rank status, resolves to hunt down the player who secured that prestigious position. Riode, an accomplished, a rank player, swiftly discovers the whereabouts of the enigmatic S-rank individual. In a fascinating turn of events, two additional players join forces with Riode, forming an alliance with the shared objective of eliminating the enigmatic S-rank player. Amused by their endeavors, the S-rank player confidently asserts that the others will soon comprehend the vastness of the gaming world. Observing the unfolding events, the professors overseeing the match pose a question to Professor Seiler, contemplating the fairness of players teaming up in an ostensibly individual competition. 
In defense of such alliances, Professor Seiler highlights that Professor Wong's student is also in the process of forming a practice, justifying the practice. The director of the exam concurs, affirming that alliances are indeed permitted within the confines of the established rules. Riode, hailing from a distinguished mafia family, combines exceptional leadership skills, strategic acumen, and astounding gaming prowess. Launching an assault on King, the enigmatic S-rank player, Riode's strikes are swiftly met with King's bare-handed blocks, employing Borat's spear. King systematically defeats each opponent, showcasing unrivaled skill and prowess. Professor Musashi, King's mentor, acknowledges the extraordinary capabilities demonstrated, likening King to a virtual reality game character with maximum stats. In the aftermath of his defeat, Riode concedes that King perceives them merely as entertainment. The director, acknowledging King's overwhelming dominance, affirms that he treats a rank players as mere children. Potential threat detected for our hero. King undeniably lives up to his name, incessantly flaunting his unparalleled greatness within the gaming realm. With 15 minutes elapsed since the commencement of the exam, the danger zone ominously expands, encroaching upon the remaining players while the activity zone shrinks, intensifying the pressure. Amidst the dwindling numbers, one individual undeniably stands out, King. Five players remain in the fray, Kerry and Maui, positioned in the promised land field, and King, Geo, and Ark, entrenched within the treacherous confines of the murderer's den. Within the confines of a building, Ark's depleted synchro rate gradually replenishes. A wave of realization washes over him as he comprehends his standing, a lowly D rank, while Kerry reigns supreme as an A rank. The magnitude of his defeat against her becomes clearer. Despite feeling disheartened, Ark summons his resolve, choosing to refocus his attention on the game and give it his utmost effort, especially now that they find themselves within the perilous final zone. Gazing out the window, Ark catches a glimpse of Geo and a rank player locked in a fierce battle against King, the enigmatic S rank. Sensing Ark's presence, King playfully remarks that they have a secret spectator. Joe and King continue their relentless clash, leaving Ark pondering the possibility of a D-rank player like himself triumphing over an S-rank opponent. There is no harm in dreaming, or there is. The intensity of their duel reaches its zenith, each displaying unwavering determination. In the climactic culmination, King emerges as the victor, besting Geo in combat. Seizing the moment, Ark approaches King, issuing a direct challenge, seeking to prove his worth. Unfazed by the audacity, King arrogantly asserts that he can defeat Ark in a mere 20 seconds. With a surge of adrenaline, they engage in a ferocious battle, the air heavy with tension. King tauntingly reminds Ark that a mere 10 seconds remaining, heightening the stakes and the urgency of the confrontation, with each passing moment, King launches a relentless assault on Ark, his attacks unyielding and accompanied by an audacious countdown from 10. Overwhelmed by the sheer force of the onslaught, Ark finds himself struggling to defend against the relentless barrage. Sensing the urgency, Ark musters his inner strength, activating the counterattack of his special shield, momentarily stunning King and preparing to retaliate. However, King swiftly employs a wake-up gum item, swiftly recovering from the temporary setback and successfully blocks Ark's counterattack. Come on, we all know that's as fair as a penguin trying to fly in a hot air balloon. The countdown reaches zero, but King's realization of his miscalculation only fuels his fury, driving him to launch an even more ferocious wave of attacks. Meanwhile, Professor Shushi takes the opportunity to divulge information about King, shedding light on a dark incident that occurred within the boxing field. It is revealed that King, an unabashed narcissist, meticulously crafted his virtual avatar to resemble his real-life self. When his plans fail to come to fruition, his extreme self-obsession triggers violent reactions, further unraveling the depths of his character. 
as King relentlessly continues his relentless onslaught against Ark. The latter finds himself unable to activate his synchro rate, leaving him at a severe disadvantage. With a vise-like grip around Ark's neck, King ruthlessly slams him into the unforgiving ground, unrelenting in his attack. Despite the excruciating pain coursing through his body, Ark discerns that this defeat feels distinct from his previous encounters with Carrie. It is as if King's eyes deny Ark's very existence, igniting a fire within him, a determination to emerge victorious at any cost. With an unwavering resolve, Ark recognizes that he must find a way to triumph, even if it means fully relying on his synchro rate and employing any means necessary to turn the tides in his favor. Carry, Ark, and King, the formidable S-rank player, remain as the sole contenders in the fierce battle, with the knowledge that the promised land will serve as the ultimate safe zone. Carry cunningly opts to wait there for her adversaries to make their move. Meanwhile, the intense clash between Ark and King rages on. King launches a barrage of attacks, yet Ark deftly evades each strike with remarkable skill and precision. The director keenly observes Ark's synchro rate, witnessing its astonishing ascent to an incredible 793% and still climbing rapidly. Empowered by this heightened synchronization, Ark delivers a well-aimed blow to King's neck, claiming that he can now anticipate his opponent's movements and respond accordingly. Ark continues to artfully dodge and counter King's assaults while his synchro rate steadily escalates. As Ark's synchro rate soars to unprecedented heights, his physical body in the real world begins to exhibit signs of strain. Blood trickles from his nose, prompting the concerned professor to receive a warning. Filled with worry, Professor Lee makes the decision to momentarily depart from the virtual realm, hastily rushing to Noah's side. In the hospital room, Noah awakens from unconsciousness and initially mistakes the professor for a doctor. It's their first encounter, like a juggling clown surprising a serious businessman during a board meeting. Expressing a burning desire to settle matters with Carrie, Noah is informed by Professor Lee that he must exercise patience regarding the recommendation exams. Taking the opportunity to properly introduce himself, the professor divulges the exam results, revealing that Carrie emerged as the victor. However, Carrie remains dissatisfied as King tragically perishes in the danger zone. On a brighter note, the professor commends Noah for shining the brightest throughout the course of the exam. Delivering the long-awaited good news, Professor Lee announces that Noah has successfully passed the exam. However, he sternly forbids Noah from utilizing the synchro rate in the future, emphasizing the potential dangers associated with its usage. A month later, the auspicious day of graduation arrives at D-City Middle School. Haiyan Zhang engages in a lively conversation with a group of girls, proudly displaying his acceptance letter to a regular institution. In a grand entrance, Noah appears, beaming with pride as he presents his Fairyland Academy recommendation admission letter, a document far more remarkable than a standard acceptance. This prestigious academy enforces a rule mandating students to reside in the dormitories and prohibits the presence of personal robots. Consequently, Noah bids a bittersweet farewell to T1 his faithful companion of a decade, knowing he must part ways for the next three years. Recalling the countless memories shared with T1 since his father brought it home, Noah reminisces on the unwavering support T1 provided throughout his journey. Even during his father's mysterious disappearance and his mother's illness, T1 remained a steadfast companion by his side. In a poignant moment, Noah embraces T1 but receives no response. Overwhelmed with emotion, he begins to shed tears, only to hear the familiar sound of T1's laughter emanating from his phone. Within the Academy's dormitory, the instructors take center stage, introducing themselves and providing an overview of the Academy's system. They emphasize that the higher a student's rank, the greater the privileges and benefits they enjoy within the Academy's facilities. The instructors delve into discussions surrounding the recommendation students and their respective ranks, 
Thanks to her victory bonus, Carrie's rank has been elevated from A to SS, solidifying her status as a force to be reckoned with. Despite Carrie's presence, King boldly approaches the group of d rank students, inquiring about the identity of Ark. In response, Noah proudly declares himself as Ark, prompting King to assert that he will emerge victorious in their next encounter, setting the stage for an ongoing rivalry. Feeling the weight of defeat, King begrudgingly concedes that he will triumph over Noah in their next encounter. This declaration sparks curiosity among their peers, who question why Noah, the victor, isn't ranked higher. In response to King's unruly behavior, an instructor issues a warning, cautioning him to cease causing trouble or face dormitory penalties. With this admonition, the students are directed to proceed to their respective dorm rooms. Noah enters his assigned dorm room and, to his surprise, discovers that his roommate is none other than Han, the player he previously vanquished in the game. Extending an olive branch, Han expresses a desire to forge a friendship with Noah, who gladly welcomes the opportunity to establish his first genuine connection at school. Assistant Kim assumes the role of guide, swiftly leading Carrie and Noah on a brief tour of the school grounds. During their exploration, they are introduced to their team, the unkillable Demon Kings also known as the UDK consisting of three upperclassmen, Jiam Ganhyun with ID name Force, Yuan Suol with ID Janie, and Hadok Jin with ID Needless. This encounter sets the stage for their collaboration as a cohesive unit. Following the introductions, the professor assigns them a task, engaging in a 2v2 game within the immersive interverse. The battleground will be set on a soccer field, with Force and Needless forming one team, pitted against Ark and Carry. So it comes to soccer after all. Carry springs into action, swiftly maneuvering to score a goal, yet Needless exhibits his prowess as the team's ace player capturing and utilizing a summoning item to halt the ball in its tracks. The close call garners strong reactions from the spectators, but Needless maintains an unwavering calmness, skillfully thwarting the potential goal. Seizing the opportunity, Force takes control of the ball, effortlessly evading Ark's valiant attempts to halt his advance, ultimately securing a goal for their team. Recognizing Ark's stunned state, Carrie urges him to snap out of it, but he remains immobilized, unable to react. In a moment of introspection, Ark comes to the realization that relying solely on his synchro rate is insufficient for him to truly grow stronger. He understands the painful truth that he lacks proficiency with other weapons and strategies, becoming acutely aware of his limited skill set. As the match concludes, the upperclassmen emerge victorious achieving a decisive three-goal lead. Ark, on the brink of activating his synchro rate, is halted by the professor, who deems it sufficient for the day's activities. Force takes the initiative to provide feedback to Ark and Carry, offering valuable tips to enhance their gameplay. He expresses their team's ambitious goal of securing the top rank in the Academy's internal game, unveiling the fact that they were ranked as the lowest team finishing in 10th place during the previous year's competition. Ark has his work cut out for him. Contemplation engulfs Ark as he ponders the professor's advice regarding the judicious use of his synchro rate. He contemplates whether maintaining the status quo is truly the best path forward. The professor emphasizes that, while Carrie possesses a lower synchro rate, she refuses to employ it as an excuse suggesting that Ark seize this opportunity to discover a new specialty, exploring the untapped potential within himself. The following morning, the first-year class is introduced to Professor Sora, who assumes the role of the physical education and martial arts instructor for the Interverse. With enthusiasm, she familiarizes the students with the division of Fairyland classes, emphasizing the distinction between real-world studies and Interverse instruction. In the realm of the real world, they delve into interverse theory and undergo physical and mental training, while interverse classes involve game practice and avatar training. The curriculum encompasses a range of evaluations, 
including the hologram gym reaction test, strength assessment, and endurance examination. ARC's results reflect an average performance. Han demonstrates commendable prowess, and Carrie secures the coveted first place. Through conversations with Han, Ark learns that Carrie enjoys widespread recognition in F-City, where she leads a group of abandoned children known as the Band of Abandon. Their influence has grown to such an extent that even adults regard them with caution. Carrie reveals to Ark that their team barely meets the minimum requirement of five members necessary to compete. Concerned about their team's previous last place ranking, Needless suggests to Force that they recruit normal admittance students. However, Force urges trust in the professor's discernment and decision-making. Observing the scene from a window, Janie catches sight of Matthew, a member of the Elemental Vipers team, attempting to recruit Carrie. In an intriguing exchange, Matthew offers monetary incentives to entice Carrie to join his team. Unfazed, Carrie coolly counters, inquiring about the sum he is willing to pay, evincing her shrewdness and determination to explore her options. That's all about money, eh? Janie's unwavering gaze fixated on Carrie from the window catches needless attention, prompting him to approach her with curiosity. In a display of audacity, Carrie boldly proposes joining Matthew's team in exchange for a hefty fee of 10 million. Shocked by the exorbitant demand, Matthew's anger surges, compelling him to attempt a punch. However, Carrie effortlessly evades his strike, swiftly immobilizing him with her remarkable agility and skill. Witnessing the altercation unfold, Ark rushes to Carrie's side, emphasizing the significance of avoiding violence. In his haste, he stumbles over a rock, inadvertently falling onto Matthew and accidentally elbowing him in the process. As tension escalates and their team members prepare to confront Matthew, Needless and Janie intervene, diffusing the situation and urging everyone to gather upstairs for a private discussion. In the secluded setting of their private conversation, Needless and Janie express their intention to shed light on the events that transpired within their team during the previous year. With Force's permission, they reveal a pivotal revelation, Fantasy Academy, once exclusively reserved for elite students, underwent a transformative shift due to the recommendation policy implemented by Professor Lee. In an effort to diversify the student body, Professor Lee handpicked individuals from cities labeled as slums, namely D, F, and Z cities. This decision fostered a deep division among the Academy's factions as the upperclassmen, excluding those from D-City, also hailed from these marginalized regions. They disclosed the painful betrayal experienced by their team, in which a former teammate succumbed to the allure of financial gain, leaving them to compete with only four members in a five-person team competition, resulting in their abysmal last place ranking. Fueled by a potent mixture of anger and a refusal to be underestimated, Ark solemnly vows to prevent any other Academy team from besting them. In a resolute proclamation, he positions himself as the team's ace, assuming the responsibility of leading them to victory. However, his declaration sparks impassioned arguments between Carrie, Needless, and Ark, as each individual voices their own perspectives and frustrations, exposing the complex dynamics within the team as the highly anticipated ICS tournament draws near. The participating teams are divided, and all participants gather for a festive party. Amidst the lively atmosphere, their enjoyment of delectable food and engaging conversations is interrupted by the audacious remarks of certain elitist individuals who speak disparagingly about their team. In a defiant act, they discreetly express their contempt by defiantly gesturing the middle finger silently asserting their determination to prove the naysayers wrong. During the gathering, Needless takes the opportunity to brief Ark and carry about the three rival teams they must keep a close eye on. The first is the formidable White Owls, a team renowned for their unwavering dominance, having emerged victorious in every match. 
Next, the Elemental Vipers, a cunning group willing to bend and break rules to secure victory. Lastly, the Metal Sharks, the team that their former teammate joined, a fact that carries great significance for Needless, emphasizing the paramount importance of defeating them at all costs. Witnessing the presence of Li Haiyanzhong, Ark's competitive spirit intensifies, fueling an unwavering determination to crush the metal sharks and prove their worth. The ICS opening ceremony commences, revealing an unexpected twist. The game format has transitioned to MOB mode. The actual games are scheduled to commence one month after the opening ceremony leaving little time for preparation. Ark shares his personal experiences, expressing the lack of friends to engage in MOB -a mode, while Carrie confesses her own unfamiliarity with this particular game format. Realizing the limited time frame available to train Ark and Carrie for the impending challenge, their three teammates come to a collective realization of the immense responsibility resting upon their shoulders. With unity and determination, they resolve to utilize the next month to the fullest, equipping Ark and Carrie with the necessary skills and strategies to confront the upcoming trials head-on. Recognizing the necessity of practicing MOB -a mode, the team engages in a discussion with their professor to address their training needs. After careful consideration, the professor makes a decision, dedicating four days a week specifically for Ark and carry to refine their skills in the game. Force and Janie are entrusted with the responsibility of instructing Carry, while Needless assumes the role of guiding Ark through his practice sessions. During the initial briefing, Needless provides a concise overview of MOBAs, defining them as intense siege battles where players strive to gain the upper hand over their opponents by systematically dismantling towers in a specific order. Intrigued by the mechanics, Ark poses a question regarding why players can't simply collaborate to defeat the footmen collectively. In response, Needless clarifies that eliminating footmen individually allows players to accumulate strength at a faster rate, a critical aspect for achieving victory in MOBAS. Armed with a foundational understanding of the game's principles, the team dives into their MOB -a practice. Carey takes the lead participating in a match with Force and Janie spectating her gameplay. Despite rapidly acquiring formidable power, Carrie makes the impulsive decision to single-handedly target and destroy a tower, disregarding the importance of coordinated team battles. Janie swiftly intervenes, outlining the drawbacks of such an approach, including the vulnerability to powerful tower attacks in the absence of footmen. Moreover, she emphasizes the significance of MOBAS being team-oriented, stressing the existence of unblockable skills that necessitate collective efforts. With a sense of curiosity, Janie wonders how Ark is progressing in his training, highlighting the need for synergy within the team. As Ark immerses himself in the game, engrossed in examining his inventory, an unexpected assault from an enemy player jolts him into action. Swiftly reacting to the threat, Ark harnesses his abilities, conjuring an ice bolt that freezes the assailant's feet, instantly gaining the upper hand. Engrossed in the gameplay, Ark discovers a newfound joy and excitement within himself. Amidst the exhilaration of a boss raid event, the team eagerly anticipates an intense team battle. However, the excitement is momentarily dampened when Needless identifies the presence of a Smurf player, a deceptive individual who intentionally lowers their stats to prey upon weaker opponents. Just as the Smurf player is about to strike one of Ark's teammates, Ark swiftly intervenes, utilizing his magical prowess to thwart the opponent's attack. In response, the opponent retaliates, launching a fierce counterattack against Ark. Undeterred, Ark skillfully employs his dodge skill, deftly maneuvering towards his teammates, seeking their support. A tank player valiantly steps in, effectively diverting the opponent's attention away from Ark. Reflecting on his past experiences, Ark reminisces about his childhood, marked by a deep-seated fear of interacting with others. 
driven by a desire to become stronger for his ailing mother. He began observing people's eyes and actions, honing this skill over time. Remarkably, MOB Gaming inadvertently nurtured his talent as it demanded a keen understanding of team dynamics and spatial awareness. Recognizing Ark's exceptional ability to read and react to the movements of others, Needless perceives him as a true genius. Among older students, this skill is referred to as people reading. While acknowledging the aptness of the description, they deem the name lacking in coolness. Perhaps unaware of the tremendous value it holds within the realm of the game. With unwavering determination, Ark and Carrie devote themselves to rigorous practice, steadily honing their skills in the realm of MOBA. As their progress solidifies, they are assigned specific positions within their team. The dynamic Ark, assuming the mid position, while Carrie finds her footing in the bottom position. Eager to maximize his potential, Ark boldly requests his upperclassmen, Force, to engage in daily training sessions. Recognizing Ark's drive, Force readily agrees, committing to morning training sessions to help Ark cultivate his strength and potentially ascend to the role of the team's ache. As Ark and Carrie grow increasingly proficient in the intricacies of MOB a gameplay, Professor Lee deems it fitting for their team, the unkillable Demon Kings, to partake in their first momentous 5v5 battle. During the intense clash, Ark adeptly employs crowd control techniques, effectively manipulating the enemy's movements to gain a tactical advantage. Emboldened by his newfound mastery, he sets his sights on securing his first kill, momentarily losing sight of the lurking enemy junglers. However, a timely intervention from Needless saves the day, warning Ark of the imminent danger and assisting in the victorious vanquishing of their adversaries. Following the exhilarating battle, the highly anticipated SKT matches are unveiled, and the unkillable Demon Kings discover that their formidable opponents are none other than the Elemental Viperes team. Team Assistant Kim delivers the electrifying news that the SKT matches will be broadcasted online to a global audience amplifying the magnitude of their upcoming competition. To Ark's astonishment, he learns that Royd, whom King had previously triumphed over, holds the esteemed position of captain within the Elemental Vipers team. While assisting Kim in the search for uniforms in his room, Ark's attention is captivated by the presence of a rare limited edition robot figure. Curiosity piqued, he inquires about its origins prompting Kim to disclose his former hobby of collecting such figures. Intriguingly, Kim suggests that these figures could still serve a purpose if infused with artificial intelligence. To everyone's surprise, Tone, inquisitive as ever, chimes in and engages in conversation, quickly endearing itself to the team. Ark proudly introduces T1 as their newest addition, a charming robotic mascot. The following day, the highly anticipated matches kick off with the commentators and game analysts introducing themselves, setting the stage for the intense battles that lie ahead. The aura of excitement permeates the air as the Academy director delivers an inspiring speech, emphasizing the values of sportsmanship and fair play. The teams, brimming with anticipation, make their grand entrance into the arena displaying a spirit of determination and camaraderie. Midway through the match, Carrie's keen eye catches an opponent subjecting Ark to bullying tactics. With unwavering loyalty and protective instinct, she confronts the aggressor, offering them a choice between silent submission or the potential consequence of two broken teeth. In response, the opponent, seeking to provoke Carrie, unleashes taunts aimed at belittling individuals hailing from the slums of F-City. The atmosphere reaches a crescendo as the highly awaited SKT game finally commences. Both teams exude unwavering resolve, vowing to give their utmost best. Amidst the mounting tension, Ark catches wind of an opponent's remark, expressing curiosity about witnessing the skills that led to the defeat of King.
As the match progresses, the crucial laning phase takes center stage, determining the early dynamics of the game. Analyzing the job matchups, it becomes evident that UDK holds a slight advantage, yet EV's team boasts a higher scaling potential. The opponent engaged in combat with Ark, misled by a false perception of his vulnerability, grows increasingly confident in their dominance. Sensing an opportunity, Eevee's bot team initiates a daring assault, aiming to gain an upper hand. To counteract the threat, UDK swiftly communicates vital information to Ark. They alert him to the presence of an enemy jungler on the top side of the map, a reminder that vigilance is crucial as unseen opponents can emerge from any direction in the vast expanse of the MOBA game. However, Eevee's adept support player, Wands, seizes the moment and launches an unexpected attack, temporarily eliminating Ark from the game. Upon respawning, Ark adopts a more cautious approach to his gameplay, keenly aware of the heightened stakes. Eevee's team capitalizes on their advantage, making strategic purchases from the item shop and encroaching upon UDK's jungle to pilfer valuable experience and gold. With a masterful stroke of foresight, Needless urges forced to initiate a skirmish, skillfully baiting the opponents into a part of the jungle where Needless can seamlessly lend his support. Ark is positioned on standby, ready to swiftly join the impending clash. However, the opponent team astutely anticipates UDK's plan, countering their attack with a strategic maneuver of their own. They launch a fierce assault on Carrie and Janie underestimating the resilience and tenacity of their opponents. Sensing an opening, Ark seizes the moment and initiates his own audacious counterattack against the enemy team, determined to turn the tide of the battle in UDK's favor. In a discussion about Ark's unique people reading skill, he confides in Needless, expressing that his ability is limited to reading the direction of people's gazes. Intrigued, Needless proposes that Ark tests his skill before fully integrating it into their game strategy. Ark's success rate in these tests hovers around 80% showcasing the potential of his uncanny perceptiveness. As the match unfolds, Ark's astute prediction comes into play when he anticipates that Royd will make his way towards Needless. Sensing danger, the enemy team unleashes a torrent of skills attempting to corner the UDK team and target carry. In a selfless act of valor, Janie sacrifices herself, intercepting the impending attack. Reacting swiftly, Royd takes down Janie, but not without consequence, as Carrie eliminates Sabong and Ark swiftly dispatches Max, tilting the balance in UDK's favor. Simultaneously, Needless ventures into Eevee's jungle, aiming to execute a well-planned gank on Matthew, disrupting their opponent's strategic positioning. UDK's exceptional gameplay proves to be a stark departure from their underwhelming performance in the previous year, rendering their previous reputation a mere falsehoods. Intrigued by the unfolding events, T1 seeks clarification from Kim, who explains the instrumental role played by Ark's adept corner play in their team's remarkable resurgence. Acknowledging the unwavering dedication of Force, Janie, and Needless in their efforts to make amends for the previous year's tragedy, Professor Lee commends their commitment and resilience. As the game presses on, UDK effectively dismantles the Guardian and breaches the second line of defense, now advancing towards Eevee's mid-barracks. With mounting anticipation, a climactic 5v5 showdown looms on the horizon, set to determine the fate of this fiercely contested match. As the game unfolds, UDK charges forward with unwavering determination, systematically dismantling Eevee's towers one by one. Only the barracks and nexus stand as the final bastions for Eevee's defense. In response, Royd formulates a calculated plan for a counterattack aiming to initiate a decisive team fight by targeting UDK's damage dealer, hoping to turn the tide of the battle in their favor. Amidst the chaos and flurry of abilities, one seizes the opportunity to launch a surprise attack on Ark from behind. However, 
Ark's foresight allows him to anticipate Wons' maneuver, leading him to coordinate with Carrie for a swift and coordinated counter-strike. Utilizing his firewall magic, Ark successfully incapacitates Wons, neutralizing the threat. With a sense of urgency, Carrie urges Noah to maintain focus and analyze every aspect of their opponents, strategizing for the safest position to unleash devastating damage upon their adversaries. Ark's brilliance shines through as he relentlessly takes down Matthew once again. In the wake of a remarkable Quadra kill, Needless directs Ark to eliminate the remaining enemies surrounding Royd, even if it means exhausting his mana reserves. He implores Ark to utilize any means necessary, including his trusty staff. Rising to the occasion, Ark unleashes a display of extraordinary skill, securing a momentous pentakill and sealing the victory for UDK. With the destruction of Eevee's barracks and the collapse of their nexus, UDK emerges triumphant as the victors of the game. This monumental triumph stands as a testament to their teamwork, resilience, and unwavering spirit. It marks a significant milestone for their team, affirming their growth and solidifying their position as formidable contenders in the world of MOB gaming. As Ark takes part in an interview with a UDK reporter, he feels a mix of nervousness and determination. Ah. The spotlight is the biggest enemy of an introverted hero. When questioned about his resolve, he confidently expresses his desire for both the Academy and the world to recognize and respect the strength of their team. However, in a lighthearted moment, Ark accidentally bites his tongue while speaking, causing a brief, humorous pause in the interview. Professor Lee, impressed with the team's performance, takes the opportunity to offer his guidance and support to Ark, sensing Ark's concerns about his laning skills, which he feels have become a burden for the team. Professor Lee suggests a unique solution. He advises Ark to create his own laning world for focused practice, offering valuable tips to help him improve and excel in this crucial aspect of the game. In the specially created world, Ark selects the unknown, older data from UDK's team. As he immerses himself in the practice sessions, he quickly realizes that the unknown player in the data possesses incredible strength and skill. To his surprise, Professor Lee reveals that the unknown player is none other than his former self, representing a past version of his own gameplay. Intrigued by this revelation, Ark engages in a series of 70 games against the old version of Professor Lee striving to defeat him. However, no matter how hard he tries, Ark is unable to inflict any damage on his mentor's virtual avatar. This leaves him pondering the true identity and origins of the enigmatic unknown player. Upon leaving the virtual reality room, Ark encounters an unexpected encounter with an upperclassman. The upperclassman initiates a conversation about Needless, a fellow teammate before bidding Ark farewell. It is then revealed that the upperclassman is Loki, the captain of the Metal Sharks and a former member of UDK. This revelation adds a new layer of intrigue and raises questions about Loki's intentions and his connection to Ark's team. As Team Unchained Wolves prepares to face off against Team Metal Sharks in their eagerly anticipated game, Ark seeks guidance from Force regarding his laning skills. Force advises him to be persistent and continue practicing, emphasizing the importance of perseverance and determination in improving his gameplay. Commentators and game analysts introduce themselves, setting the stage for the intense battle that is about to unfold. Team Unchained Wolves, composed of both third-year and second-year students, holds a respectable 3RD place, ranking from the previous year's game. On the other hand, Team Metal Sharks is predominantly composed of first-year students with Loki serving as their leader. Upon discovering Loki's connection to Needless as a friend and the traitor he spoke of, Needless becomes consumed by anger and a desire for vengeance. However, Loki uses his influence to instill confidence in his team, 
reassuring the nervous first-year students and motivating them to rise to the challenge. The stage is set, and the game officially begins, igniting the excitement of both the players and the spectators. During the game, a fierce skirmish erupts between Nell from Team Unchained Wolves and Nightmare from Team Metal Sharks. Despite Nell's valiant efforts, Nightmare skillfully dodges his attacks, leveraging his synchro rate to gain the upper hand and ultimately eliminating Nell from the game. The tide begins to shift in favor of Team Metal Sharks as they capitalize on their momentum. Team Unchained Wolves succumbs to the mounting pressure, making critical mistakes that cost them, team members, one by one. It appears that Team Metal Sharks is on the verge of securing victory as they relentlessly push forward, intent on destroying the Nexus. However, just as Team Unchained Wolves had done in their previous battles, an unexpected resurgence occurs. During the second week of the SDK tournament, a series of intense matches unfold. Team Unchained Wolves emerge victorious against Team Fire Buffaloes, while Team Unchained Wolves secures another win against Team Victor Unicorn. In a surprising turn of events, Team Honeybirds loses to Team Colorful Mermaids, and Team Metal Sharks emerges victorious against Team Stun Death Scythe. These results position Team Unchained Wolves in a tie for first place in the SKT rankings adding to their growing reputation and momentum. As the UDK team prepares for their upcoming match against the formidable Metal Sharks in the third round, Ark engages in a conversation with Han. To Ark's surprise, he learns that King, the renowned player, will only serve as a substitute in the game. This revelation raises questions and uncertainties within the UDK team. Meanwhile, Haiyan Zhong, a player from the Metal Sharks approaches the cane machine in contemplation. Ark takes the opportunity to approach him and discuss their upcoming match, extending a gesture of goodwill by raising his hand. However, Haiyan Zhang chooses to ignore Ark's attempt at conversation and walks away, leaving Ark puzzled and disappointed. Unbeknownst to Ark, Haiyan Zhang engages in a separate discussion with Loki, the captain of the Metal Sharks. Haiyan Zhang expresses his reluctance to utilize a certain capability referred to as the Helper, a hidden cheat chip implanted in his body that remains undetectable by the Interverse Firewall. Despite Loki's suggestion that Haiyan Zhang should leverage this advantage, Haiyan Zhang remains steadfast in his commitment to fair play and insists on competing without the aid of the Helper. In a separate encounter, Loki attempts to greet Needless, seeking to mend the rift between them. However, Needless refuses to acknowledge Loki's presence and asserts his determination to prove him wrong through his actions on the battlefield. The tension between the two players adds an extra layer of anticipation and rivalry to the forthcoming match between Team Unchained Wolves and Team Metal Sharks as both sides strive to prove their worth and secure victory in this high-stakes competition. The unkillable Demon Kings, aware of the immense challenge ahead, prepare with unwavering determination for their upcoming match against the formidable Metal Sharks. Ark, in particular, devotes himself to intensive training, engaging in countless battles against the mysterious opponent to enhance his laning phase timing. Despite his relentless efforts, Ark confesses his disappointing results to Professor Lee, a record of zero wins and 75 losses against the enigmatic player. Intrigued by the opponent's identity, Ark seeks answers, but Professor Lee maintains secrecy, heightening the mystery surrounding the unknown player. As the third week of the SKT tournament commences, the highly anticipated clash between Team Unchained Wolves UDK and Team Metal Sharks, MS finally unfolds. The coaches of both teams exchange a firm handshake, signifying the commencement of the game and the intense competition that lies ahead. However, the early stages of the match bring a daunting challenge for UDK, as the Metal Sharks swiftly demolish their bottom turrets in a remarkably short span of less than seven minutes. 
the captain of the Metal Sharks encourages his team to utilize the helper from the very beginning, leveraging their advantages to gain an early advantage over their opponents. Amidst the chaos of the battle, a significant blow lands on UDKS Force. A member of their team falls victim to a solo kill, dealing a blow to their collective morale. With the bottom turrets crumbling under the relentless assault of the Metal Sharks and the opposing team securing dominance in all areas except the mid lane, the situation appears bleak for UDK. However, in the mid lane, the pivotal battleground, Ark finds himself engaged in a fierce duel with Nightmare, a formidable opponent from the Metal Sharks. The clash between Ark and Nightmare showcases their exceptional skills and unwavering determination as they vie for control and supremacy over the crucial mid lane. The outcome of their battle holds the potential to sway the tide of the match and provide a glimmer of hope for UDK amidst the overwhelming odds they face. In the midst of the fierce and chaotic battle, Nightmare makes a bold decision to forgo the use of the helper determined to prove his worth through his own skills and abilities. This choice reflects his unwavering belief in his own capabilities, showcasing his commitment to achieving victory through his own efforts. Meanwhile, Loki, observing Nightmare's decision, rushes towards the mid lane, perplexed by his teammate's choice to reject the assistance of the helper. In his confusion, Loki decides to personally intervene intending to rectify the situation and potentially sway the battle in his team's favor. However, his path is obstructed as Needless intercepts him, initiating a clash between the two rival players. During their intense confrontation, a surprising revelation emerges. Both Loki and Needless were recommended students, with Needless securing the top rank while Loki trailed behind in second place. Their shared history unfolds as they recall their humble beginnings, stumbling upon a broken gaming console in F-City and working together to repair it. They nurtured a common dream of becoming professional gamers, fostering a deep bond between them. As their clash intensifies, Loki skillfully employs the powers of the Helper, effectively deflecting Needless's attacks and ultimately severing his right arm. Justifying his betrayal, Loki asserts that he had to sacrifice everything to achieve his personal ambitions, implying that his actions were driven by a ruthless pursuit of success. The situation takes a grim turn as Loki prepares to deliver a final, devastating blow to Needless, seemingly determined to eliminate any remnants of their former camaraderie. However, in a surprising twist, Nightmare interrupts the imminent clash stepping forward to engage in a conversation with Loki. The air becomes charged with tension as they delve into the reasons behind Loki's departure and betrayal, shedding light on the complex web of motives and secrets that lie at the heart of his actions. In this climactic moment, the truth behind Loki's choices and the full extent of his motivations are unveiled, leaving both teams and spectators captivated by the unfolding drama.